Hey everybody. Today we're using R to do some chi-squared testing for independence of categorical variables. We're going to be using the chi-squared.test function. Now in this vid we're not going to talk about goodness of fit testing which does use that same underlying function in R. If that's what you're wanting to learn about I have a video on that too. I'll throw a link up top. We're going to work through this problem taken from the OpenStax textbook introductory statistics. In a volunteer group, adults 21 and older volunteer from 1 to 9 hours each week to spend time with a disabled senior citizen. The program recruits among community college students, four-year college students, and non-students. So here we have a contingency table, sometimes called a two-way table, showing how these volunteers break down among these two categorical variables. The first, the type of volunteer, and the second, the number of hours volunteered, here viewed in terms of three categories, one to three hours, four to six hours, and seven to nine hours. Okay, so let's swap over to R, let's input this data, and uh, then run a chi-squared test to see if these categorical variables are associated or not. So to input this data, we're gonna build a matrix. Let's call it volunteers, and we're gonna build the matrix using the matrix function. And the way R wants to learn about a matrix is just to get a vector of data and then to get some description of the structure of that data, how exactly you're inputting it. So C parenthesis to let it know that we're building a vector. And then I'm just going to go by the rows from left to right, top to bottom. So 111, 96, 48, 96, 133, 61, 91, 150, 53. I've been doing these by row, so let's let R know that I was going by rows and not by columns. And then let's make sure R knows how many rows we want in the matrix, so n row equals 3. And then we can just take a look at that matrix that we've built. And I'm just going to pause for one moment to glance to make sure I've input the data correctly, and it looks like I have. Now, technically, that's all we need to run a chi-square test is a matrix like that. However, right now it's pretty ugly, so I'm going to go ahead and put in some row names and some column names. Using row names, parenthesis, the name of the matrix, volunteers, and I'm going to assign it a vector, a character vector. The first row was, um, I believe the first row was community college students. The second was four year. And the third was non students. Let's also put in some column names. And I need the name of the matrix in there volunteers. And here we're going to put in three more, um, or a character vector of length three here as well. And so it went one to three hours, four to six hours, and seven to nine. All right, so let's take one more look at this. Now, very beautiful table. Okay, so again, the main function that we're going to want to use here is the chi square dot test function. And I could just do chi squared dot test parenthesis volunteers and get a result. I'm actually going to give that result a name, and we'll see why in a moment. Then chi squared dot test and the name of the matrix. And of course, since I'm assigning um, that to the to the variable model, I'm not actually going to get any output. If I actually want to see the result here, I have to type model, and there we go. We get just what we would hope for if we know anything about chi-square testing. We get a chi-squared test statistic, in this case 12.991. We get the number of degrees of freedom out, so of course that's one less than the number of rows times one less than the number of columns when we're doing a test for independence. And then we get a p-value um, computed using the chi-square distribution, um, computed, computed using this test statistic chi-squared is the sum of observed minus expected squared over expected. Fantastic. Um, so of course that's a fairly small p-value. 
I want to point out just a couple of other things before we move on here. First of all, there's a bit more information um, in this model object than just the chi-squared statistic, the degrees of freedom, and the p-value. And if you look at the help file for the chi-squared.test function, you can see everything that's built in there. In particular, there we go, a bunch of different things that, uh, that may have use to you at some point in your life. The two that I really want to point out are the expected. So those are the expected cell counts and the residuals. And so those are the Pearson residuals and you've got the nice formula there. Fantastic. Um, I will point out one other way of getting a chi-squared test here um, using R. We can take this matrix that we have and coerce it to a table. So how about uh, vol table or vol tab as, oh, let's just say as.table parentheses volunteers. There we go. And then if we just do summary of the vol tab, it's once again going to run a Pearson chi-squared test for independence for us. Of course, we could have done it directly using the chi-square.test function. This is just one other way to go about it. 